Welcome back to the channel guys. We are out here today at the Mizuno factory. We are going to show you guys exactly how a club is built. I've never seen this process. This is my first time. We're going behind the scenes today of the Mizuno factory. It's going to be insane. Let's go. Yeah, so we're gonna go through the whole um, whole custom process line, show you where you know all the components are received, where they're stored, how the orders get started, and just go down the line and how they build every single golf club that comes from Mizuno USA. Heck yeah, that is gonna be this is gonna be so interesting. I've never really seen how any of this works, so we're all gonna be learning together. Let's go. This is where you know like all Mizuno USA products that we got: baseball, softball, running, volleyball, swim, soccer, all come from this facility. And then uh, golf has its own separate manufacturing facility. Look at those walls over there, which we'll, we'll check out here shortly. So ever since the pandemic, you know, our, our stock sales have, have gone uh, really through the roof. I mean, in the past, we've always been about 80% of the 20 custom to stock sales. Yeah. And uh, you know, now that everyone's getting into the game a lot more, you've seen stock set sales just, just skyrocket. You know, people are going in the retailers, really looking just to get something that they can walk out the door with. And they're not willing to wait two, three, four weeks on a custom set to come in if yeah. they're waiting on like a shaft or a grip to come in. They, they want something now. They want to walk out the door so they can go right to the course. My buddy, Henry, you guys have seen on the channel who owns the golf course. Um, He's been booked ever since the pandemic, so it just shows how crazy golf's been getting. We are heading over now to the golf club manufacturing, like where they actually build the clubs, and we're gonna see how they build them and everything. This was kind of just the whole warehouse to start out. Now we're actually gonna dive into all the golf clubs. Yeah, so this is the beginning stage of the manufacturing area where all the components are received. We got a number of things here. We got club heads, shafts, grips, all boxed up here and ready to be kind of moved into just our general inventory area. Yeah, so this is the receiving area for manufacturing. Uh, this is where all the club heads come in and get inspe inspected to uh, make sure they all got proper head weights labeled on them and just to see if there's any you know, imperfections. If everyone doesn't have a club head weight on them, they do go to uh, an area where they get resent back to the manufacturer. Gotcha. Uh, so what exactly is she doing right now? The wedges get received a little bit differently. They don't come. They don't come with this loft and bounce uh, badge on them. They come with a blank. Oh, gotcha. A blank number, and then depending on what they are, they get labeled based on what uh, loft and bounce they want to end up being. Unbadged. And I just got a badge on them and then shrink wrap them, and they put a sticker on them. Well, that's awesome. We only have a certain number of stock wedge heads uh -huh. and to make all the different loft and bounce options, they, they get bent either one or two degrees each way to create those different loft and bounce combinations. Gotcha, okay. I never knew how all the like bounces was created. See on there real closely it says 5808. Yeah. So anytime you bend the loft one, it changes the bounce by one. Gotcha. So a 5808 is also responsible for a 599, 6010, and then on the other side a 578 and a um, 56 uh, 7. Wow. Well, they inspect all the clubs for to make sure they have the head weights on them, but the wedges are the only ones that go through that particular process is based on the uh, the loft and balances that they end up getting labeled as. Gotcha. So once everything gets inspected here, it moves into these uh, racking rows here and just gets uh, put up for storage. Uh, generally put the club heads on the bottoms because they're the heaviest. Generally right. Goes heaviest and lightest as you go up shafts and grips on the second and third level. Wow, yeah, true temper. I do know though. All the new stuff here, 223s, Mizuno Pro. Yep, I just actually got those in the six iron through four. And all these trays are labeled based on what uh, head weights they are. So some people may not know, we have two different head weights for our irons and wedges. Uh -huh. uh, we have an A weight and then a B weight. A weights are for, are the heavier the two, they're for any club set that's built from anywhere up to plus a quarter inch over. And then for anything that's plus a half inch or longer, we use a lighter B weight just gotcha. to try to keep the swing weight down a little bit. And so these are, are these all customs? These are not custom sets being sent out, are they? Well, these are just the heads that are um, 
here for any bill, whether it be stock or custom. That's not determined yet what kind of set they're gonna go with. That's just based on, they're just here for storage and then once they move into the line over here, it'll depend on how the order is, you know, what the order is placed. Uh, stock orders have different dates for different orders uh, right. set to go out. Custom orders are more for at once. So they pull them uh, you know, when the order comes in. This is uh, where all repairs come in. Joe checks them all in based on um, based on what comes in, you know, there's a variety of reasons they come in to get reshafted, you know, club bend, either they loft lie adjusted. Uh, it's a number of different things, but um, you know, Joe takes care of them and gets them into the line. Once the repairs are received here, they typically ship out within, say, three to five business days. A lot of these are free on sets and stuff. Yeah, so they all come with, a, you know, a work, the main customer service will print up like what's going on with here, why we're reshafting it, uh, what's coming back. So you see here an old set, so the MX-23s came back. Uh, they're just reshafting them. They got the link fly, grip request, and then uh, that's the original serial number on them. Uh -huh. And just uh, Joe, once they're received, Joe checks them off and prints this little work order with them and stays in the line uh, with them until they get all the way down to the end and boxed up and shipped back out to the customer. Wow. All right, you guys. So now we're actually heading into the actual manufacturing where, they, where they're building the clubs here. So really what you see here is just a, a smaller version of what we just saw out there in terms of just the storage. So everything gets pulled from here, and then when they need the backfill stuff here, they pull from outside and just kind of bring it in. It's just a constant process to gotcha. refill it all. But this is the beginning stages of each custom order where the staff will pull all the parts and get them going in the line. So the beginning stages of each order, um, once the work order is printed, uh -huh. it gets uh, brought out here and you can see all the different specs here. We got uh, part numbers for all the club heads and shafts and grips. You see the specs here. So this set's going to be a 5-2 sand wedge, uh, JPX 921 hot metal, plus a half, three up, Lampkin 360 grips and then Project X LZ50 shaft. So the related SO number uh -huh. is will actually end up being the serial number that stays with this club. That's what will laser etch on the hosel. Gotcha. So when any consumer has their club, say two years down the road, if they lose their six iron, they can just refer to this serial number and we'll be able to know these exact specs. That's awesome, yeah. I know from previously, like when I needed another club, when I recently just got new clubs, all you have to do is take that little number off the hosel and it brings up like all my stats on my club. So basically like a whole system being logged into the computer of all your specific personal stats. Yeah, so once the order is pulled and you see, you saw him put the, all the components in the, bag, in the box here. So we got the work order that stays with the box as it goes down the line. Gotcha. So once um, once all the heads and shafts are put in here, the, before it moves to the next line, they'll check off. You know, they'll initial it to see who signed for it, so they can. If there's any errors down the road, we can always refer back to see like you know, where the mistake happened. But uh, but this, you know, the work order that we showed you a minute ago, this stays with the set all the way down the line. The first step in the line is the saw, and uh, this is pretty cool. You know, it's not just like a manual saw where you're lining it up. It's uh, Every, every set is programmed in there, so when he types in the work order number, he knows exactly uh, what club head it is, so exactly what length everything needs to be cut at. Right. And uh, so the saw is set up to where it's set up almost like a, like a little accordion style, uh -huh. so all he has to do is put the tip in against that, and then just pull. And then it's going to adjust, it's going to sh shrink. Wow. So these club head is... Each club head is a half inch difference until you get down to wedges when they're only a quarter inch apart. Right. And this saw is programmed to know that. So all he has to do is line the tip of the shaft up to the to the end of that uh, row there and then just pull the hammer and uh, it's gonna cut it exactly. So yeah, once all the parts are pulled, that's the first uh, first step in the actual like production process. So then once all once the shafts are cut, we move down here to the tip sanding. So all, all shafts get the tip sanded, just to create a little a uh, little bit more of a rougher surface so the epoxy adheres to it better, gotcha. so it'll stay glued to the club. So after she tip sands them, she's also applying the, uh, the ferrules to them. And we have a couple different size ferrules. Uh, the typical iron to wedge ferrule gets a three-quarter inch ferrule. Yeah. It's a black, something like 
that particular to Mizuno, but it's just a black three quarter inch. We also have our custom Icon Ferals, which are classic Mizuno colors, which are really cool. Yeah. Uh, we started offering these in the spring and they've been really well received. That's sweet, so that's step two. Step one, two. Yep. All right, on to step three. All right. Next in the line is going to be where we swing weight club. I mentioned it earlier, but all the different heads, really all the components in general, have uh, a weight tolerance. Uh, um, you know, they may, every shaft may be you know, supposed to be 115 grams, but it might be off by a gram or two here and there. Uh, same with the club heads. So the swing weight station here is to help kind of offset those those different light or differences in tolerance. Right. So we have a variety of different weights here available. Tip weights that just slide up into the ferrule. I mean, up into the hosel of the club. And uh, we use what's called a shadow graph to swing weight out the club. See that shadow moving up and down. So what we do here is we dry weight the club for swing weight. So we have all of our grip options set aside there. And then all the different uh, potential buildups for tape. Because the tape does affect the swing weight at the end if you, if you put a lot of layers on. So right. like it's two and a half layers, two layers, just to kind of mimic what the weight is. So she's trying to line up the swing weight here. Um, she's got the weights in there. We're going to put the, the tape on there that's requested on the order, and that's going to give us what the swing weight is. And then uh, if we see that there's any like major inconsistencies, right. that's when we'll add different tip weights in there to try to offset that and create a, a better balance throughout the set. So that's pretty much step three. Yep. On to step three. Let's move on to step four now. Now we're no, moving on to epoxy. So it's a, we use a two-part epoxy uh, for all of our custom clubs. It's a um, it's a little bit different than the epoxy that we use on our stock club line because this stuff dries in about 15, 20 minutes. Uh -huh. Whereas our epoxy we use on the stock line has to cure overnight. So it's a two-part epoxy. They just apply, once they get it in here, they'll apply it and uh, kind of roll the, roll the tip of the shaft and then put some in the head. We'll watch how it's done here. So a couple of times throughout the day, they'll do a, a quality inspection check on the epoxy because like I said, it's two parts, so it's 50% from each to make one. So if it's off by a certain amount in any direction, it could lead to a bad uh, bad epoxy job and potentially uh, you know, down the road, the club heads could come loose. Yeah. And we don't want that. Yeah, so they just go over here to the racks when they're done. Okay. Uh, like I said, the, the, uh, that epoxy only takes about 15, 20 minutes to dry. The next step, if there, if it's needed, if there's any loft to lie adjustments needed, they move over here to the uh, to the net grind area. So now so, they're bending the clubs. If they need it upright, they'll bend it upright, basically. A couple different machines here. you got the cool clubs machines, uh, digital readout. Uh, very, very accurate. They get inspected, I uh, believe, four times a day and uh, just to ensure the, uh, the accuracy of them. But you see here, they use the bar to bend, loft, and lie as needed. So you just bent that club. Then they pull that lever back to inspect that the, uh, num the number is where it's at, or where it needs to be, rather. Wow. And they got books in front of them of all of our clubs with all their standard specs so they can know, you know what, where it should have started from. Right, so those are, that's what he's basically going off right there is Correct. all the statistics. Yeah, because right. based on the model, you know, some of the lie angles are actually all the same. We use the same lie angle in all of our models, but the loss can definitely vary based on the uh, on the model itself. Typically, the, the more modern clubs or more game improvements can have a little bit stronger loft, and then our more uh, player style clubs or blades are going to have more traditional loft, to get right. a little weaker. All right, so step six is the uh, where they grind down the, what we call the net grind, where we uh, sand down the ferrules to get them the exact same diameter as the hosel because once we put the ferrules on we showed you back there they're not they're just a raw ferrule they're not made they have the right what they call inner diameter but the outer diameter is not the same as the hosel they actually yeah. are a little bit thicker so when they come to the neck grind here they put them in these machines here and they sand them down to get the like, like an even transition from hosel to ferrule so they're all the same gotcha. when they put them on they're kind of glossy but after they go through the sand they get a little bit of a rough rough look to them, more of a matte finish. Right. But then that gets, uh, you'll see at the end here when they put some uh, acetone on it, really makes some high gloss again. So it's a torque test machine, so they put it in there. This is, uh, you know, roughly 20, 30 minutes after the epoxy's been done. So this is to make sure, uh, just to ensure that the epoxy has bonded properly and is not gonna uh, break once, once the club leaves here. So they go through the test, twist the head to make sure that epoxy is, is uh, that strong, that uh, bond is strong. You don't want to hit a shot out there and the head goes flying, you know. So that's kind of their job to make sure the head's on there very secure. So 
next step after the torque test, actually we're gonna get the uh, the amount of wraps put on for the tape on the grips. We've got it down to the science. He's uh, pretty good at this. It's a little quick. Once he just stands in there to see how many wraps it needs, she's just gonna put the clubs on there and, and start rolling them up. So once she once she uh, finishes gripping up the whole set, then we'll move down the line to the next uh, next station for the to get the grip supplied. All right. So basically, she just slid the clubs down this this line here, and they are going over there. Those are all the clubs with the tape on them, and now the grips are about to be applied. Let's walk over here and watch how the grips are applied. It's a uh, it's a pretty cool machine. It's basically it's all air compressed. It locks the club head in, and then there's a laser line to. Uh, line up the club head so you can ensure that the grips get get installed in a uh, in a straight line let's see uh, you know grip has the little tick marks yep these are supposed to line up and that's what the laser does on there so when you get it on there it's straight line right The clubs have been gripped, they come on down the line. Yep. The next step is to get the serial number laser etched in the hosel. Gotcha. So earlier we talked about, we showed you the serial number or, or uh, work order that's gonna be laser etched on the club. So like years down the road, if you need to reorder a, a club, right. you'll be able to do that. So this is how those serial numbers are applied. So they go in those racks there, then they move them in here. And then wow. uh, this might be hard to see on camera, but once they get in there, a little, a little tiny laser is gonna etch the number on the hosel. Wow. It's pretty small. Holy, so a laser was just doing that. Yep, so a laser <laughs> etch, it's a very light etch. It actually is, you can, once it's done, you can't even really feel it, but it is lightly in there, so it's never gonna wear out. Wow. So once oh. it comes out, it feels a little rough. You can actually feel it more. Uh -huh. um, it just has a little bit of, little bit of texture there. Yeah, like I light. said, guys, that barcode, is your like that's your personal like code if they ever search that barcode in the computer they can bring up all your statistics for your clubs so here the clubs are getting the final wipe down uh polishing on the ferrules and the hosel on the i'm sorry the uh the ferrules and then wiping up the serial numbers wow uh, work order work order that started with the order is still with them and it's going to go all the way to the end here before they get shipping labels printed up and boxed up so cool to see how customized all these are i will say that like, yeah these i mean are all, all the different personal. varieties here i mean you got DG120, yeah. C Taper Light, all, all the, the different, different varieties. So, yep. you know, like I said earlier, about, roughly about 80% of our uh, golf club sales are custom, and that, that number is still pretty close to that. Jason manifests the order here, gets the shipping label, sticks it on there, box them up, and then straps them up. Wow. That pretty much that pretty much wraps it up for today you guys wow that was that was a lot to take in but that was it honestly reminded me of when i was young i used to watch videos on how it's made and how everything's made um in this world and that kind of reminded me of it hopefully you guys did learn a lot thank you jeff so much uh for everything today that was awesome yeah, that man. Was Glad super to, uh, good take you through the tour hope yeah. you guys enjoyed it guys if you did enjoy that hit that like button that was one of, that's probably the most i've ever learned about how clubs are made because i did not know a lot like i don't really dive into that stuff that was the most i've ever learned right there like in like a quick little time span that was unreal but hopefully you guys did enjoy that until next time uh peace out <laughs>